and he finds yes. the Art Deco cross your aunt has. <laughs> right. This is, of course, you know your history. This is where Jesus was crucified on a tiny cross. <laughs> so people, people were a lot shorter back then. It was when they, yes. And the Lord was carried to Pier 1 and forced to take down the cross from the wall. And Karen said, we've got a new one of those in the back if you want it. And the Lord said, no, this one will be fine. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we lambast another selection from that spreading infection we call Christian cinema, folks. I'm your host, No Illusions, but I'm not in seclusion. He's off on vacation, but by way of placation, Eli will tell you some jokes. He's all ready, he's greased, he's 900 miles northeast, and he's hoping this opening will end pretty soon. We're almost ready to go, so let's make with the show. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am amazing, except I also wrote the answer to my thing in rhyme, and it's... I don't want to do it anymore. This is like <laughs> this is every group project I've ever been a part of, except it matters how little I did. Fucking John Bunyan thought I wasn't going to rap back. Holy shit. Wait, wait, there's more. Wait, I got another one. I got another one. And while Heath will be missed, we have a guest masochist, and he's characteristically seeking to bolster his brand, opening arguments and that other one, serious inquiries only. Thomas, welcome back to the show, sir. Uh, thanks for having me. Wow, that was fun. Good job. I appreciated that. Uh, can't wait to talk about this heaping pile. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, okay, so I guess we should explain to everyone why the fuck I'm rhyming. Thomas, <laughs> tell us, what will we be breaking down today? Bonus points for doing it in rhyme. We watched The Pilgrim's Progress. This film was not a success. <laughs> uh, that's all I got. That's all I got. Yeah. That's as yep. far as <laughs> it's a really uh really bad rhyming. It is a so it's a musical, mm -hmm. which right when you said that I was already I mean I'm already in whenever you know, <laughs> whenever I'm invited yeah. for gam, I'm I'm in. But then it's like it's a musical, even more in. It's a Christian musical, yep. And based on uh the Pilgrim's Progress, written by, as you said, John Bun Paul Bunyan, John Bunyan, one of the Bunyans. <laughs> one of the Bunyan brothers, yeah. Written in, what, 1670-something? So I'm, it's just all around. This is hitting every button that I've ever wanted to be a part of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boy, I'll tell you what. It sure did age like wine. And Eli, <laughs> how bad was this movie? Well, if you found the Bible too subtle and you enjoy bad rhymes in couplets that double <laughs> with poems so forced... They're a part of me, too. Then The <laughs> Pilgrim's Progress is the movie for you. There you go. Well done, sir. Well done. Take that, Jebediah uh, Bunyan or whoever yeah, the, well, so whatever here's first the cousin you are. When I first started writing this, I wanted to do it in like bad rhyme like this movie was done yeah. and like the book was done. In, but, but I just can't. can't bring myself to do yeah. that, especially <laughs> after I realized that Gamcast cast rhymed with lambast. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, man. All right. So, yeah. So just be clear. We're going to be lampooning the movie this week. But we're also going to be lampooning at source material, the second most widely read spiritual work in history after the Bible, the beloved allegory that's been translated into more languages than all but three other books in human history, Pilgrim's Progress. And why are we going to be lampooning that? Because it fucking sucks. And being old is no excuse. This came out after Shakespeare died. Shakespeare was good. He could have been good. <laughs> this is what killed him. He read the first six pages of this. And he was like, nope. <laughs> read it off. <laughs> All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh, this was a tough one. I felt like uh, it was hard to do best worst because it's just the fucking worst. But uh, I thought of one. I think this was probably best worst temptation of Christians. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's, it's I love getting in the mind of Christians where they're like, "Oh, what are the uh, what are the, uh, the, the the atheists and the the heathens? What do they like to do?" I know <laughs> what would be really tempting is dressing up in clown makeup and selling plastic bread. To yeah, you, I guess. And for some reason you can't buy the bread, otherwise you're bad. I, I don't. Uh, 
What are the pleasures yeah. of the world? Popcorn and shoes. I was going to say popcorn and shoes, too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's the thing is that they can't show any of the things that would be tempting in their own movies. Yeah. So it's just always got to be implied. You know, she's wearing a lot of makeup. She's a clown, but it's like a whore. Yeah. Uh, I was not tempted by any of that. No, nope, nope. neither. Nope. <laughs> I, curiously enough, I think I'd have stayed on the same path with Pilgrim. <laughs> All right. So I was going to go with, honestly, best worst Noah triggers. Okay. Mm. The whole thing is done in bad forced rhyme. You have multiple people sitting up out straight out of sleep from a nightmare. You have bad juggling in the background on multiple occasions <laughs> you have christianity like basically all my triggers it was just a domino's fucking setup yeah. of no all triggers. they needed was like some slightly slow customer service and they had yeah exactly, exactly. there's exactly. an airport line for some reason <laughs> <laughs> oh see i was gonna go with best worst anachronisms no uh -huh. <laughs> We've seen a lot of ancient Jerusalem beach towels, but this movie, this movie will open with the greatest anachronism we've had in any movie, in anything we've ever watched. I paused the movie and rewatched it several times just for the first anachronism in the film. There's more anachronisms than chronisms. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. Like, yes, yes, exactly. Than time. Find it's not a like, single it's not like oh, we left a Starbucks cup in the <laughs> shot. It's not that. It's, it's like it's in a Starbucks and they left an old cup in the Starbucks. Like <laughs> yeah, that. exactly. They left a mug in the Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is a period piece as brought to you by the aliens from Dark City. I have no fucking idea when anything is. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. This story has actually been translated into 200 languages, which means we're going to need to learn a lot of ways of saying shit. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the second-grade Valentine rhymes that are Pilgrim's Progress. Hey, Eli, quick question about the... Uh are you drinking a beer while we record? Oh, no, Thomas. This is liquid death. Oh, God. No, uh, Eli's trying to kill himself again. Again? No, 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 no. Liquid death, it's actually really good water. It comes from the mountains. It's rich with natural electrolytes and minerals. Wait, so you drink water from a can? I sure do. Why? Because... Their cans are infinitely recyclable. Plus, Liquid Death donates five cents from every can sold to help clean up plastic pollution and bring clean drinking water to those in need. Oh, that's nice of them. Where can I buy some? Well, Liquid Death is only available in a handful of stores, so you have to order it online. You just go to liquiddeath.com slash awful. They're offering listeners an exclusive deal to get $2 off every case. That's liquiddeath.com slash awful. Or, better yet, you can click the option to literally sell your soul on their website in exchange for a free case. Yes, you can actually sign a real soul contract that is legally binding for eternity. So wait, just to be clear, this is this is not a bit. You aren't joking. You, you can go to liquid death slash awful and sell your soul for a free case of liquid death. Yeah, you really can. I have never heard of a product more perfect for your audience. Right? I got the stomach pump. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, sorry. False alarm. It's uh, it's water in a can. Damn it. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Thank you for coming to the first ever rehearsal for Pilgrim's Progress. Just real quick. Want to go over the costumes I'm seeing. Uh, just be clear. We were going for medieval. So, yeah. Yes. Question. Yeah. Uh, what about a leather jacket and jeans with a ruff? Just a random ruff around my neck. Okay, I mean, the, the ruff is good, but those other clothes aren't even... Excuse me. Really? Excuse me. I have, a, uh, like, basketball shorts and a white T-shirt with a Nike logo. A swoosh. Again, it's, it's not even close to, to medieval. Hello, but... I have a Victorian gown my great-grandmother left me. Okay, well, that's, that's actually getting... And I've covered it in iPod shuffles. God damn it. How about a shirt that says, if you can read this, it's the year 2017 right now as I wear it. It seems like kind of the opposite of what we're going for. I have that shirt, too. Yeah, we all do. Okay. 
And we're back, and we're going to open up on everybody involved in this movie going, ooh, you guys got a spinny logo. <laughs> spinny, I'll probably spend a dollar or two on that spinny logo. Ooh, I told you that fiver was going to pay off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they start their movie by drowning a guy. Brave. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> My first thought was, oh, please tell me whoever was going to be responsible for this movie is now dead and we don't have to watch it. And it's just like, a, here's what almost could have been, the, but you, but we spared you is what I was hoping for. Yeah. Yeah. We see a guy drowning and then some other guy wakes up from a dream about drowning, I presume, but not about. Well, we'll find out later. He was dreaming about another guy dreaming about this guy drowning. But yeah. That's, yeah. It's one of those inceptions things. I expected at any moment Leonardo DiCaprio to come over and just be like, hey, hey, you're confusing. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this narrator character is both how I picture Andy Wilson and how I picture his house. So, so far, so good on this movie. <laughs> and he, he walks up to a little like figurine. And he's like, oh, dreamed of you. <laughs> like, wait, 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 wait. Is this a guy, like a man you killed and you're taunting like, hey, remember when you died and I dreamed about you drowning? You know, like, isn't that a sinister? Yeah. Weird. Remember when I trapped your soul in this carving of a banjo player? Yeah, exactly. What? <laughs> but yeah, and, and like, apparently, okay, so he's dressing up as a Union Army colonel, I do believe. Yes! <laughs> okay, and jumping into his Victorian carriage thing <laughs> yeah of which he's like an uber carriage driver getting ready for a shift i think he's gonna <laughs> okay but the best part is the carriage very clearly says hop on hop off carriage rides <laughs> yes it does <laughs> and it is my favorite anachronism we have ever encountered yeah. <laughs> and we've read the book of fucking mormon <laughs> yeah <laughs> and like from the movie's perspective he gets in the carriage and then the carriage drives itself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's got a fully automatic Victoria. Yeah. He's got one of those Tesla carriages. They're so yeah, cool. Exactly. <laughs> Take a little nap while it drives you. <laughs> so, yeah, no, he Ubers his way over to uh, to the church, apparently. And then we cut to a bunch of people dressed entirely in burlap singing Jesus songs. Okay. Uh, in this so scene, the, the costumes range from... Halloween yeah. pirate to wearing a vest, right? So there are people who are like, and then there's like a full row of guys who are just like, vest, come on, that's old timey. Yeah. <laughs> we all obviously had these notes. Mine was, the costumes are amazing. And everyone in the church is starring in a different Gilbert and Sullivan musical. <laughs> is actually what it is. We got like Pirates of Penzance. We got, it's just, it's, it's so funny. They're clearly raided a costume shop of not a good community theater, a really <laughs> shitty low budget community theater. And this is what they had. Yeah. Yeah. Really shitty community theater is definitely what they had. <laughs> <laughs> and this church, by the way, it's so pathetic. It sh shouldn't even bother existing. It's a, cl you know, like a clown car, but a church, uh -huh. you know, like they, they show you the exterior and it's like a four foot by three foot box. And then inside it's like this huge, Exterior shot. Yeah, no, it's it's like a TARDIS kind of a thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I expected a voiceover to kick in at any moment, start talking about tiny house culture, but no, it's just a church. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, so they, they they have after so everybody sings a Jesus song or whatever, and then the Union Army Colonel gets oh, up to give a oh sermon, God. and he's standing in front of this wall that manages to look unrealistic, right? Like they put a green screen in front of a wall and then green screened into wall. Yep. <laughs> Well, the real wall dropped out. Couldn't, it's yeah, like, couldn't be associated be with the said, project. Yeah, it, it, just, it just <laughs> fell down. It was like, I will not be in this movie. No, it just collapsed. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. So he thanks everybody for coming. And then he goes back into his church. Oh, God. And didn't realize we were there. I yes! know. Oh, my God. I just was like, oh, geez, please. No, 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 no. Don't don't break the fourth wall. I beg you. I beg of you. I, I, I need the fourth wall. I never felt like I needed a fourth wall more. It's like just uh, it's the one thing I still have at this, this point in this movie. movie. The ring, man. Don't talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, this movie is filmed in the second person, apparently. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. And and also he's like, hey, uh, you want to help clean? And then he pauses for a second, like the actor goes, right, not actually there. Um, well, I guess I'll tell you a story. Not sure why 
introduced the idea of you cleaning. It's it's probably so I can do insane pantomimes for the rest of the movie. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, so he's going to tell us the story of this movie while he cleans up his church. And after he tells us this, the movie basically just does a mulligan and starts different. <laughs> like, you know what? You know what? Now that I think about it, the, the drowning thing was fucking stupid. Let's start again. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> New credits. New credits. Like in Holy Grail. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and then this is the first time they start rhyming oh, in the movie. Uh... And this is where my notes are just... Are they going to rhyme the whole movie? Me fast forwarding. They rhyme the whole movie. I quit cut awful movies. Oh, yeah. Uh, Fucking painful. And not like, you know, not good rhymes. Like uh -uh. Eli's part of the intro, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> but in rhyme, he's telling us the story of a guy walking through the wilderness who then rests by a stream and dreams the story. So we're now... What, we're three level, four levels in to being told this story? Yeah. Yeah, I think that could explain why time is moving so fucking slowly. <laughs> <laughs> and why no one was willing to draw him a maze in the movie. I get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Inception as imagined by Dr. Seuss on acid. Okay. But he was dreaming of a guy having a rough go of it, turning into Bible man was the visual that we got. But this is Pilgrim. This is our main character. We're finally going to get whatever five levels deep and meet the guy this movie is about. Yes. Who is Jeremiah Traeger? Yes. <laughs> it's so, thank you. So many of my notes are Jeremiah does this. Jeremiah goes here. <laughs> See, now I had him. <laughs> I feel bad for Jeremiah now, but I had him as poor man's Nick Cage, which is weird because Nick Cage is poor man's yeah. Nick Cage. Yeah. Why, why he has to make all those movies. Yeah, right, <laughs> poor right. Poor man's yeah. Nick Cage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to pay off that debt, become just middle class man's Nick Cage. <laughs> yeah, there you go. If he, make, if he makes seven more national treasures, I think. It'll help. So at this, it's at this point, I'm thinking... There is zero chance we're all going to agree on an accent. I take it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no chance we're all going to agree. Yeah. It's like the accents are like the different costumes. It's all it's fucking God knows what. <laughs> oh, it's just a bunch of kids that are taking this D&D &D game too seriously. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We range any. I was going to say we range anywhere from Elizabethan to no, you got hit with a fireball first. <laughs> To like one of the actors was like, well, I do a killer fat bastard from Austin Powers <laughs> whatever, 2 yeah. or whatever it was yeah. like. That's still relevant, right? Yeah. Do that accent that for some reason. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. So, OK, so Pilgrim is burdened down by sin, which will be visualized in this movie by a comically large backpack that he'll be carrying through the first half of it. Mm hmm. And he's read in his Bible about how his town is going to burn to the ground and the apocalypse is just around the corner. So he better get the hell out of there. Said the book that was written in the 1600s. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, right, right. Also, Jesus also said yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a gigantic backpack. And I have to assume if you crack open one of the chambers of it, it's just whacking off. Like that's it's <laughs> all your sins, right? It's just like a giant, just a bunch of. The backpack full of sin, yeah. Exactly. With Sharpie on him says, whacking off, whacking off. <laughs> hey, what else are you doing at 1600? I mean, I'm True. sure he murdered like one person. But well, other yeah, than that, mainly... There's a murder brick at the very bottom. He's like, there it is. <laughs> I told you it wasn't all whacking off. <laughs> His wife reads the Bible. She gets like triple the size backpack. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hold on a second. Speaking of his wife, you get to see a uh, pilgrim woman's bra strap. So that's cool. Pilgrim bra strap. Yeah. 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 They, appearance. yeah. <laughs> so. back, back when they had those, definitely. And uh, in addition to the pilgrim woman, I, I guess it's his wife, but like, are they married or is she, is this a roast comedy that that's what it is? He, I, they just <laughs> roast him in rhyme. Every member <laughs> yeah, of the family, family steps family. forward. Yeah. <laughs> Says how much they one hate of those him. kids. By the way, they had never spoken. It was their first word, <laughs> and it's a roast in rhyme of this pathetic husband. And they all agree. The one thing his entire family agrees on is this guy's a dumb piece of shit, and he should get the hell out of here. Yeah, yep. I was looking away at my notes when that kid talked, and I was like, "Oh, is the dog getting in on the?" No, it was the youngest. <laughs> yeah. It was his youngest. No, the dog okay. just peeing on him the whole time. <laughs> his family hates him. 
Yeah, it, they, the, the family hates him. They don't believe him that the town is about to be destroyed. It won't be, by the way. We watched the whole fuck. Mm. It, it, they're right. Yeah, so he runs away from his family, screams at the sky somewhere, and that's where he meets a guy named Evangelist. Now, if you're not familiar with Pilgrim's Progress, all the characters are named like that, right? Like, there's a character named Mr. Ah. Turnback. He'll turn back. There's a guy named Evangelist. There's a guy named Atheist. He's fucking awesome. But yeah. He's the best. So, He's my so, second favorite character yeah. in the movie. <laughs> but yeah, we meet Evangelist. And here's my theory. They had like an Irish cousin visiting. Or <laughs> this guy was just good at an Irish accent. Because I will not understand a single syllable that he says in the movie. <laughs> Right. First line I have down here as fly to Nurakite. <laughs> that was fly to the narrow gate. But yeah. So I guess we only have access to this guy's notes. We don't actually have the original work in which he figured out the names of the characters. He, we just have the place where he's like, well, this guy yeah. will be a fucking evangelist and then I'll come Tack. up with a good name. Right. Later. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Didn't actually get the real draft, I guess. Yeah, so Evangelist Holt hands uh, Pilgrim a scroll, and the scroll basically just says, get the fuck out of here, right? Yeah, mm. the, the, the scroll says leave, and he tells him to look for the, as Noah mentioned, narrow gate, which will be the first of 845,000 MacGuffins that this movie introduced. <laughs> also, also, it won't be narrow. No, nope. It'll just be normal gate-sized, because they couldn't afford... A narrower game. And it was at this point I typed in the Super Bowl shuffle is better rhyming than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Everything in it is just so forced. They're like, you know, running words together to make them fit in the rhyme scheme. It's terrible. <laughs> mm -hmm. So a pilgrim goes running off and then two of his neighbors go to follow him. Overweight <sighs> people can't run as fast as underweight yeah. people. That's got to uh, there's a lot of humor there. They were no, not so sure of anything ever in the history of their lives and that this fat lady running joke was going to kill. They yeah. like lingered on. You can hear them like talking about, oh, this is, oh my this God. Is this is great. We should so spend good. a full six minutes of screen time on this lady. She is, based on screen time, the main character of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, yeah, this, this scene ends uh. with like a trailing laughter, like one of the ends of our ads or something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but this is what, what's, what's her name, Mrs. Bitchy, and her and her husband, Mister Turnback. Or, mm -hmm. I get, what was her name? I don't. Oh, know. is Turnback? That's code for the fact that he's clearly gay and she's a beard. Is that? That is so much definitely. a darker reading. I thought just thought it was referencing the fact that he quits later on. Oh no, I think he's definitely gay, and that's a <laughs> that's a signal. This guy is clearly closeted. I, it, I mean, it, it could be both. It. They definitely code him gay, and they they have yeah. him in like <laughs> well, at least sorry, I should say. They have him in foppish, like, Victorian wear from the waist up and pajama yeah. pants. <laughs> well, yeah. He got the first half of that costume. <laughs> Spoiler alert, atheist will get his rough. If you, uh, if you, if each person only uses half a costume, you can have twice the number. Yeah, <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> and that explains the church scene right there, too. Everybody's in the pews. No one has pants on in that scene. <laughs> you seen that old dollar bill trick, you know, where if you have enough of them and you cut the end off of the one and then you shift them all down. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that, but with costumes. It's that, but with casting. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. So, but the chick is not going to go with him, but Mr. Turnback is, right? He decides to, to walk the narrow path with Pilgrim. So they go to walk together and shit, and Pilgrim's telling him all about how awesome Jesus is in song. Yes, this is our first musical number. And it's a Mumford and Son song. Yes! And this, <laughs> this musical number is so bad because it's, tell me all about heaven. It's going to be so great, right? And all he's got is like, it's not like the earth. <laughs> also, Jesus will be there. Oh, and the music is, I, I expect better music than this when I put a quarter in the horsey ride in front of the IGA, okay? <laughs> like, this is terrible music. Mm -hmm. And this guy that's with him, I my nose is just like, why is Pee Wee Herman with him? I don't understand. The costume <laughs> is so amazing. Uh. And we should point out that Jeremiah, the, the pilgrim here, he is so sure he's a rock star. Yeah. He does so many inappropriate rock yells at various yep. musical points in this movie. Just like, and, he, and Jesus 
<laughs> he's like, Jesus will be there. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's when I thought, you know, Jesus Christ Superstar isn't better than this. Sorry, let's be real. It's, <laughs> it's not equal. It's, it's about the same. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, no, I wrote in my note. Holy shit, Hilgum's progress fucking rocks, guys. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. You've been converted. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but unfortunately uh, for them and for us. The last number ends with them coming across a broke down bridge. So they've got to find a new way around. And this stupid goddamn movie has to go on extra long because of it. Right. Oh, and they are trying so hard not to stand up and show you how shallow this water is yeah. in this scene. Yep. Yeah. Those 17 inch rainwater ponds. will really, yes. uh, They'll get you. Brutal. Well, they, okay, yeah, they, they're crossing a dangerous bog on a slippery log, and then they fall in. But, yeah, it's the fucking drowning scene from Men in Tights, right? <laughs> I was thinking that same thing. I wasn't sure I could make that reference. Is Men in Tights still good? You can make that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, like, they're very clearly, like, first of all, they say it's a swamp. You don't drown in swamps. You stand the fuck up. And so... This water immediately makes Mr. Turnback quit, and he has a wonderfully beautiful meltdown that almost breaks the Ryan scheme. He's like, it's okay. We'll be on our way. No, fuck you. Fuck you. You did not say there was going to be water. You did not say there was going to be water. Uh, yeah, he's like, uh, even my fat lady beard is better than this. I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I didn't know there was going to be falling in water, a bunch of bullshit. So yeah, Mr. Turnback turns back i guess we should have seen that coming and not only that but he, he he's such a dick about it he won't even help pilgrim get back out of the 17 inches yeah. of water he's drowning in but don't worry there's a guy there to help him out by just telling him yeah just just walk out of it it's fine <laughs> the, guy, the guy who comes to his rescue is just like okay come come on come on come out that's all he does he doesn't even do a anything. man named help literally yes. is like <laughs> All right, you're going to want to get out of the water. I'll get out of the yeah. water. Oh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. It's like help is trying to make Pilgrim not feel stupid as he walks out of there. He's like, yeah, no, man, people drown in those 17 inches of water all the time. It happens constantly. Yeah. They should put up some orange cones or something, you know. <laughs> yeah, I should get a, get a paper towel. Dry that thing up. <laughs> yeah, and this he's saved by a guy costume for the Nutcracker, by the way. So yes. another... Yes. Another, another uh, genre. Hey, yep. it's whatever the fuck was in the back. Okay, that's what yep. they were wearing. <laughs> he's from the. This, he's got a costume from a Three Musketeers bar. <laughs> yeah, right. Strip bar. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh. bless their optimistic little hearts. They left space for a commercial, guys. Oh, I felt so sorry for them. <laughs> As I found this movie, by the way, this movie has a website. They were sure it was going to get distribution. And then finally, like you look at their super nice. Someone paid someone's cousin to make a website. And then it's just here. It's on YouTube. You can watch it. Please just <laughs> put yeah, somebody just fucking watch, watch it. it. <laughs> Let's hope we get picked up three in the morning lifetime channel. We could do it. <laughs> no, they couldn't. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we come back from commercial we're back to that union colonel narrating oh, wow. to remind us that this is all done in second person. And then we cut back to Pilgrim coming across a worldly man, which will be uh, represented by a fat dude in a British judge's and I, wig. And I'm just like, please, no, I'm just typing. Please, no, just I see what's about <laughs> to happen. I just I don't want this character. I just don't want to. This was the the one theater major involved in the movie. And he, and he, <laughs> You like never really got cast in anything and complained it was all politics. You know, like, oh, director yeah. just cast her favorite. Like, is that guy? But he did technically take the classes and graduated with a degree in theater. <laughs> so he's here to fucking ham it up. Like, he's oh, really yes. going to make us laugh. Oh, yeah. He was, he had him rolling in the aisles at church. So <laughs> yeah. he was ready for his big starring role. And what I love is that this character is supposed to be like a snooty, worldly person, but all he does is point out how stupid the allegory of the gate is. He's <laughs> like, wait, going through the gate will cleanse your sin? And he's like, yeah, no, because I have a burden and it'll all go away when I go through the gate. And he's like, yeah, but if you're carrying a thing, why don't you just put it down? And he's like, stop. Shh. And he's like, okay, well, what if you just, you know, came to a place where everyone was kind and generous and took care of each other? And he's like, Shut up. Stop it. Stop. We're supposed to go through the gate. 
Yeah, well, and this is such a ridiculous fucking temptation as well, right? Because the way that the story goes, he comes across this guy and he's like, oh, man, you don't need to follow this narrow path and be religious and everything. You can just follow this simple set of rules and everyone will get right. along fine. That's the bad guy That's in this in this that story. is one of the temptations of the protagonist, which, by the way, they symbolize as a mountain because, you know, being kind and generous and taking care of each other is impossible, like climbing a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I that's what I was thinking, too. I was like, wow, hiking to the top of Mount Shasta or wherever they film this, <laughs> it doesn't seem easier than what Jeremiah was doing before like it actually seems a lot harder yeah right right yeah seems like they're fucking up their own allegory right and they're trying to climb up like like obsidian stones the whole time <laughs> was this fucking mordor where, <laughs> what, Gollum jumps on him like switchbacks man use some switchbacks it's gay it's a longer route but yeah. it'll be a lot easier on you. like i don't believe the close-up shots are the same as the far away shots <laughs> Not, no identical. I don't think it's an entire mountain made of obsidian pebbles. Yeah, no, I don't think that that's <laughs> actually Mount Fuji. Yeah. <laughs> they bought the stock footage of Fuji and then they filmed the movie at the old quarry. So he yeah, kind of doesn't match up. <laughs> also, this is where the voice of God booms out to just be like, fuck being a good person. Go back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And in case that wasn't clear enough, Evangelist shows back up and says, fuck being a good person. Go back. Right. But Evangelist shows up and is like, you know, chastising him for where he is. And he's like, well, what are you doing here, Evangelist? Like, we're both on top of this dumbass mountain, right? We're both, we're both on this metaphorical mountain. Like, it's like running into someone at a brothel, isn't it? We're like, well, fuck, uh, okay, we're both going to pretend we're not here. But it's not like I can be like, hey, just, what are you doing at this brothel? We just followed each other in. Yeah. Yeah. What? I was, here, I was here to catch you. Yeah. <laughs> no, honey. I <laughs> God, I didn't even notice that because I was so busy reflecting on the fact that Christians have so thoroughly internalized the being a good person isn't the point and doesn't matter message that they don't even know it's fucked up anymore. Yeah. They don't even understand that when they translate it into fairy tale ease the way they have done in this movie and book, it's patently absurd and makes no sense anymore. Yeah. Right. Well, I thought this was just a dig at the Jews, isn't it? Because this is about like, oh, the Old Testament law. Yeah, Mount Sinai, yeah. Yeah, it's not going to get you there. It's yeah. mainly just to bash Jews, I think. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. That was certainly the intent in 1632 or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely a cut scene at the top of the mountain where a bunch of people are like complaining about the weather and adjusting the thermostat <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> But yeah, so Evangelist tells him it doesn't matter if he's a good person. Being a good person doesn't help at all. And, and he decides to emphasize this point in song with music brought to us from the FreeCreditReport.com band. Yes! Oh, this is a Modest Mouse song, actually, if you listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now. I was with you on Mumford and Sons. But. I like Modest Mouse. You don't come from Modest Mouse. Yeah, I no, I like Modest Mouse. I, I was like going to say, Modest, Modest Mouse, Mouse at the very least has clever fucking rhymes. <laughs> oh, yeah, but like they, that, that, they, the, the, the aesthetic of it, like it's just oh, yeah, different yeah. ripoffs of different things. Yeah, that no, I seriously, the that, certainly that's what they're going for, but as imagined by the freecreditreport.com band. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I agree with you there. And then at a certain point in the music, I was like, is somebody going to shoot somebody? Because it got all like, <laughs> I don't know, law and order. So it was like, bow, jika, bow, jika, yeah. I'm like, what? Is there is somebody going to die right now? But then no, none of that happened. Nothing. There's also just a tiny moment at the end of this little like song about how great it's going to be and to stay on the true and narrow where the narrator goes. So they hugged and they parted and they very yeah. clearly <laughs> do not hug. Yeah, they very clearly yes. hear the narrator and they're like, <laughs> no. Fuck all yeah. that. I don't. I have the exact same thing, except it was like, yeah, except they didn't hug. They're 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 like, and now they hug, and they're like, nah, man, no homo. Sorry, <laughs> right, and yeah. now he shakes my hand. No, he walks away. He walks away. Yeah, and, just but <laughs> they don't even. There's nothing. They <laughs> they don't even like fist bump. Can we get anything? No, <laughs> nothing. All right, so. Then Pilgrim walks away from Evangelist and comes across that narrow gate, which, again, is just normal gate width. There's nothing narrow about it, but it's locked. 
So he slams himself against it once and it doesn't give. And he slams himself against it uh, another time and it doesn't give. And then he reads the sign that says, just knock, asshole. <laughs> 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 it's like, oh, I never considered reading. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the best part is this is someone's front gate in Bayonne, New Jersey, wherever they film this fucking movie. So we can't slam into it too hard. So he's got to do like yes. a eh, bit, eh, bit, bit, like chasing a toddler. And yeah, here I come <laughs> running into the gate. Eh. And while this is happening, we are our next musical uh, ripoff, which is like, dump, 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 dump. And I was just like, oh, please, God. Flash. Whoa, Savior, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was like, it, it's got that bass line going. Uh, I wanted him to bust into it. Oh, but no. No, he no, knocks didn't. and a guy comes through and says, oh, yeah, no, this is the narrow gate. It's not symbolic of anything, really. You just... Just means that you're going you further down this path. Your princess is in another castle. Yes! Is what I'm trying to tell you. Your princess is in another castle. And again, up until this point, the entire movie has been about how his sins will fall away through this gate. And the guy's like, yeah, you made it to the gate. Step one in a long, long series of steps. I should have. I feel like we shouldn't sell the gate so hard so much as the. Anyways, yeah, get on. Get on in there. We've got an angry, angry man whose house we stole for the next scene. <laughs> All right. And at that point, they show a, a close up of Jeremiah Traeger here. And I sincerely hope that they tried to make his teeth yellow just for the time <laughs> period and that it's not his real teeth because it's like they rubbed some like movie theater popcorn butter on his teeth. It's disgusting. Ah, oh, I, I really hope that was intentional and not just that guy. So. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to meet Interpreter the Interpreter. Interpreter! Oh, my. Okay. So he shows up at this guy's house. He knocks. He doesn't even need a fucking sign. Doesn't slam into this door at all. He knocks, and the guy invites him in like he's about to show off his Transformers collection, right? He's like, oh, come in. I've got some really cool shit to show you. Well, I, what do we say invites him in? Listener, come on this little metaphor journey with me. Imagine you put Noah in 700 years at gunpoint and made him participate in this movie. That will be Interpreter's performance throughout this film. Oh, Hi, yes. how's it coming? Welcome to my house. I'll teach you many things. Come inside. No, I had it down in my notes as this guy's delivering his lines like he's not allowed to pee until he finishes them. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, I had the same thing. This guy's bad for this movie, like yeah. even relative to this movie. Right. I just wanted to go into the, the Wayne's world like, look, I know it's a small part, but I'm sure we can do better than this. And like, <laughs> the guy out and bring in Charlton Heston, Gordon Street. And yeah. again, as he walks in, we learn why Interpreter will be hate yelling all of his lines because someone has put him in the most fabulous fucking moo moo you've ever seen <laughs> on an 89 year old Marine Colonel. <laughs> <laughs> I love to. This uh, is such a minor part of the movie. But Pilgrim, when they go into the house, Pilgrim's looking at this painting and he's like, Yeah, this is the super holy guy. God loved him especially. And Pilgrim's like, Oh, wow, I sure hope that I could be as holy as the guy in that painting someday. And Interpreter's like, No, you can't. Now let's go to the musty dusty room. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, and he does this glasses bit, right? Isn't that now? Where yes, he does this fucking oh my god. Glass. It's comedy gold. One second. Let me take a look at you. Huh? My eyes are getting bigger. Yeah, he holds his glasses farther away and like close up, like rear, rear, rear. I'm like, that's not how glasses work, especially in 16 fucking hundred. By the way. <laughs> but they spend so much time on the bit, right? Yeah. He, he like this guy screamed at everyone right before this take, and he was like, "And you're all gonna shut up while I do my motherfucking glasses bit." <laughs> <laughs> And then after he pulled it off, he was like, well, I mean, obviously you guys owe me an apology. Like that was worth it. I mean, clearly See? fucking comedy. Gold. I'm harsh on you, but it's for gold like that. Let's all watch the dailies. I said, we're all watching the dailies. <laughs> <laughs> and we, uh, the narrator butts in right around here because this is where he's windexing his windows while he's telling the story yeah. for some reason. Okay. And I'm just like, He's like, you think I have time to totally stop what I'm fucking doing for every camera crew who wants to hear my story about the <laughs> cat in the hat, pilgrim, whatever bullshit? Please get in line. I've got shit to do. I'm going to tell you a story, but I'm also going to Windex the, the grease off my windows because I can't stop for everybody who wants to hear the story, okay? And that's the rest yeah. of the movie. He's doing different chores yep. and stuff. He's doing more and more insane chores every time we reach <laughs> yeah. him. 
Yeah. Spoiler yeah. alert. Next time we see him, he will be picking his lawn by hand. <laughs> <laughs> he will. Uh, All right, so back in the story, we go to the musty, dusty room, which is both musty yeah. and dusty. And so this, okay, so the metaphor here, anyway, he walks into the room, and there's a guy trying to sweep up the dust, but the broom's just kicking more dust up. And so then a lady comes through and mops it because the dust is like sin, and the broom is like the law, but the mop is like salvation from Jesus. And look, in this movie's defense, this is much better as a written metaphor than it is when you watch a 14-year-old girl pour water on a bunch of stuff and then see the floor covered in gross shit and mud and she <laughs> pretends to be cleaning it, right? She's like, yeah. there you go, all better. Not, <laughs> not spreading it around and now wet, if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, a couple things. First, look, based on all the other anachronisms in this movie, I'm pretty sure you have a Dyson vacuum handy. Just fucking <laughs> just use that. Secondly, I love this. In olden times, mops were just current mops, but with a tree branch for a handle. Yeah. <laughs> they just cut off the like modern mop head and then yes. put like a fucking tree, like a shitty, like it's not even like it's a good tool, you know, a good piece of straight wood. It's just like a fucking tree branch. Yep. Uh, yeah. But also, like, I'm sorry, again, you know, once you visualize these things, they all fall apart. They're like Hindu myths in that way. But do they just have that poor old guy standing up in that room all day sweeping just in case somebody comes by? That's fucked up. Yep. Sweeping just so someone can come by and then someone can do his job and then be like, look at that stupid asshole. I feel like if there's a staff <laughs> meeting, the like House of Metaphors staff meeting, he's like, what if I like try to sweep and then I fail and then I get the mop? And they were like, well, then what would Allison do? And he's like, you know, I don't know what Allison would fucking do. Maybe she can get her own goddamn metaphor. <laughs> you know, every time she finishes mopping that fucking thing, we have to come up with a new name for it. So <laughs> Dave just lies in bed. He's not even a metaphor. <laughs> uh, there's so much turnover, though, because several previous sweepers died of lung-related illnesses yeah, just, right. like, every couple of weeks. And again, we should point out, this is an allegory inside an allegory inside a dream about a dream. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so she finishes mopping. They have to come up with a new name for that room. And then they go to another tortured allegory room. This is the one where the guy is raking muck as a lady tries to give him a crown but he just doesn't look up to heaven so he doesn't know to take it <laughs> yeah this lady has my mom's exact nail job circa 1996 <laughs> i had to spend a lot of time sitting in the nail salon while my mom got her nails done because i never got to do anything as a kid it's exact like it's the perfect <laughs> it couldn't be a more anachronistic thing they got a close-up too of like oh look at my nail job from 1996 i mean it's anachronistic now too well, but, right, also yeah. Then. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah so he won't stop raking muck because he's too in love with the worldly things and he doesn't bother to look up and see heaven but there is also a third allegory room well one, one more thing on that allegory room i was trying to work out the whole time like, okay, his horrible fucking haircut is part of the allegory, right? Like, there must be... <laughs> okay, was, thank you. Yeah, I was trying to work it out. Like, I, is it the part, the awful center greasy part on his hair that's too short to part? You know, like, it's that hairdo. It looks like he's trying to give each side of his head different length bangs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm thinking, oh, what's the spiritual significance? Oh, no, he's just, it, that's his hair. Okay, nope. never mind. Sorry. There were a couple of people where I had that thought, like, what does his hair <laughs> represent? Like, when they meet faithful <laughs> later? So, like, yep. the parting of the sea or the, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, something. Uh, nope, just, just bad. Okay, just horrible. All right. So now it's time to move to our third room. And I'm not going to even call it an allegory room because it's just a dude. First of all, they open the fucking door. He sits straight up out of his fucking sleep from a nightmare. On cue. <laughs> when they open the door and there's just a sleeping guy, I wanted so badly for interpreter to just be like, all right, for your third task, fuck my friend Ted while he's asleep. He's okay with it. That's cool. Uh, or he's just like, he's just not ready. Like, oh, fuck, sorry. This yeah, room, <laughs> give me a second. Cool. Gotta, Dave. Not a, lot of, not a lot of pilgrims come through here. We're not even sorry. We're a little out of sorts. Uh. I'm supposed to cover this room in beans. Uh, yeah. What? If, it, if you count the beans. Oh, man. I'm so sorry. I've had the flu all week. I didn't know you were going to come. Can we pretend that my sleeping is the, is the metaphor? Figure we it out. We need a we're spotter. Gonna... <laughs> but also through every door, they have to do the fucking 
close up, like the microscopic close up of the definitely not 1600s door handles. Like, come on. Yeah. They're the, the, the standard door handles with a little pop lock thing that yep. obviously was not around <laughs> yeah. in the 1600s. Mm. Ugh. It wasn't even around in the 1960s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So. All right. But yeah, but in the third room, they come across a guy who is having a nightmare about Jesus coming back and fucking our shit up. Yep. And I just wrote in my notes, oh, I've had this acid trip too. have some orange juice, dude. It's going to be OK. Yeah. And, yeah. And he's so he uh, he starts explaining this interminable dream. Like he just goes, dude, I was thinking. Partway through, Jeremiah's going to be like, you know, I don't know why I asked. I'm not really that interested in what your dream was. Like, let's just, can we close the door? Like, okay. Also, my kind of journey was started by me having visions of the world ending. So yeah. feels, your dream kind of feels repetitive. Yeah, find your own lane. Man. Yeah, right. Well, and as if we didn't already notice that, they they pointed out, right? Like, So they, they're like, all right, we're going to leave that motherfucker there. So they leave Nightmare Ned, yeah. and then Pilgrim explains that he's had the same dream. Well, sucks to be you. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> At least you're not in the musty, dusty room. That motherfucker's yeah. got cancer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so they're like, he's like, I've had the same dream. And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, we know. We were watching the beginning of the movie. And then Interpreter kicks him to the fucking curb. He's like, all right, well, that's all you get from my house. No uh, warm he's food or a, or a bed to sleep. <sighs> Nothing like that. Get the fuck out. So clearly this actor being like, all right, get out. My wife has bridge club. And she said that if you're here at 330, she'll take my moo moo. Yeah. And uh, nice close up on the plastic part of his glasses that didn't exist until the 1900s. <laughs> and also, I at this point, I realized I can't, the, our main character, Mr. Pilgrim here, whose actual real name is Jeremy, by the way, is close. Uh, I cannot listen to this guy's fucking whimpery voice anymore. Was it just me? It's, it, his, he decided his characters. Huh, then I, I had the same dream the whole time. Like, yeah, Fuck. yeah. Like the Ugh. kid that played Dennis the Menace in the old cartoon. Yeah, no, it's, it's <laughs> it, it nails on a chalkboard. All right, so he's he's back on the narrow path. He comes across a fork in the road, gets on his knees, and he prays for some advice from God on which way to go. And that's when he meets the best character in the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 1600s me, Tom Coughlin with a gig at a burlesque show. <laughs> That's really good. Atheist. That is absolutely it. Right? I have him as high school volleyball coach who got attacked at the Ren Fair and doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but this man. is, this guy's name is Atheist. He's an atheist. Kind of like, you know, he didn't really have a choice in the matter. It would have been really confusing if he'd grown up to be Christian. He is wearing a ruff and a T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have that he's playing Beetlejuice in a new production. Yeah. and they, they made a musical out of that. He's, he's <laughs> like a bad community theater version. Yeah. But you have to admit, I mean, he kind of he nailed atheists, right? Like, admit it. This is us. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Is us. I mean, yeah. He's got us. <laughs> If we're at Bill, first of all, like he laughs at this guy for like five minutes when he realizes <laughs> yeah. that he's praying in the middle of the road to see which way to go. And I'm like, all right, so far, this is a fair portrayal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I tell you, though, look, if it's the year 1670 and he's like, hey, science has all the answers. I'm like, well, you know, maybe, yeah. <laughs> know. Like, maybe I'm on the, the maybe, other guy's side. Maybe here. don't what? pull the trigger on that quite yet. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't, what answers do they even have at that point? And I have a theory that Atheist was supposed to sing his lines because yeah. the backup music comes in during his lines. It's like, <laughs> bum, 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 yeah. And this guy was just like, I'm God, ba, 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 ba. I think he, like, got in a big fight with the director and agreed to do, like, one last Italian run through and they just shot it. And that's what they kept. It's like, uh, it's like whose line, how Colin never sings in the, the last part, you know, <laughs> the, the, the hoedown. There's yeah. One of them that never says, he's just, ah, da, 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 da. It was that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Savalas, Mr. Never mind. You know, <laughs> and, uh, you, there's also in here, I think maybe right before this, we get another quick peek at the narrator who's uh, changing the oil on his lectern. By the way, he's like under there. Like, look, again, I can't pause my whole day for you fuckers. Like, I got shit to do. Change the oil on my lectern here. Yeah. And so, OK, this line from it. Basically, we have. Atheists basically get into a rap battle with Pilgrim and then mm -hmm. drop the goddamn mic and go home. Yep. 
Right. He wins. He, he, his last line is, I laugh at your ignorance, poor simpleton. You believe in God's word and are burdened by sin. Mic drop. Walks the yeah. fuck off. Right. To which Pilgrim responds by passive aggressively praying at him. Yes, he right. does. He's, he kneels down for a like, okay, he was a jerk face. Big old <laughs> jerk face, God. Just, uh, you know, if you're ever going to give anyone like cancer or the tongue or anything, I, just, I don't want to tell you how to do your job. And made me feel really stupid. I got this big backpack and everything. <laughs> so... <laughs> And you get a, as he's uh, praying, you get a nice shot of this fucking disgusting red chest sunburn that he got during filming. <laughs> Did you guys notice? And he's got like a boil in it. It's, oh my God. It's intense. Yeah. It's really bad. It's not what you want. <laughs> Between him and the dust room guy, like they went through the, like all kinds of different cancers in this uh, <laughs> yeah. movie. All right. So, yeah. So he metaphorically turns off this podcast and keeps going back down the narrow path. We get a little um, walking montage, and then eventually he gets to Mount Cavalry, apparently. <laughs> and he finds yes. the Art Deco cross your aunt has. <laughs> right. This is, of course, you know your history. This is where Jesus was crucified on a tiny cross. <laughs> so, people, people were a lot shorter back then. It was when they... Yes. And the Lord was carried to Pier 1 and forced to take down the cross from the wall. And Karen said, we've got a new one of those in the back if you want it. And the Lord said, no, this one will be fine. It really changes what is one of the like most powerful parts of the Bible, which is Jesus carrying the cross. You know, if he's yeah, just like, right. oh, he's oh like, I can. Well, if oh, okay, I'm going to juggle a couple yeah. of those. Yeah, yeah. Do I, do, is just the one cross? Do I need... Is anybody, do we need extra crosses? I could probably do four or five of these. <laughs> got that and, a, and his wife's purse. <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> Alright, and then of course this is where Pilgrim can finally throw off that big silly backpack he's been carrying and then it just rolls back down the hill. I so wanted to cut to like a little kid at a picnic getting crushed by that at the bottom or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what is God. it? Oh, these jerk off bricks. Ow! <laughs> yeah, I, I have the similar note which is yeah, just fuck whoever's at the bottom of that hill, I guess. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I have to say, this, I don't know how many people get this, but this is, this is where I realized this singer is definitely a Jeff Buckley fan. Like, Ooh, he is really yeah. trying to sound like Jeff Buckley. And it yeah. disturbs me because I love Jeff Buckley. And I'm like, no, stop doing that because I hate <laughs> this and yeah. you're ruining it. For he's, me. he's Jeff Buckley interpreted from, I couldn't afford to go to the concert, but sitting in the parking lot is just as good. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I'm pretty sure he's wearing a woman's blouse. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he will wear a variety of blouses, men's, women's. At one point, he just <laughs> gives up and starts wearing athletic shorts. His costumes change wildly <laughs> from scene to scene. Well, we're about to get one of those changes, actually. So, so he sings his We're Almost Halfway Through the Movie song. <laughs> and then when he's done with his song, there are a couple of angels there. They've brought power-ups. <laughs> and, yeah. And what's great is they have a sort of like, oh, how long... How long were you guys there? Because uh, did you see me throw the backpack? I'm gonna get that. I just I wasn't, I wasn't just gonna lean that. <laughs> and uh, my note was like, with with angels this hot, I get why the people of Sodom wanted to fuck them over that dude's daughters. Yeah, yeah. these guys. Ooh. And they will give him what I would describe as a gift basket of MacGuffins, <laughs> right? Here's your scroll and your key and your iPod shuffle. These are all going to come in the last 14 seconds of the movie. Here's your yeah, Mylar yeah. cape. Also, here's a plastic <laughs> sword that we picked up. We got it in November because they put all that shit on sale in November. And uh, I'll, another note, sucks to be an angel with acne. Like, uh, oh, 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 yeah. ask your ask your boss about that one. Like, hey, uh, I feel like this. I don't need to have acne, right? I mean, <laughs> we're holy. I mean, you're you're more or less in charge of all this. Like, why why would I have this? No, because on the outside of the package it says no babies, and you guys are just giant baby faces surrounded <laughs> by fire. So there's nothing I can do for you. Sorry. <laughs> 
So, yeah, they do give him a shield for when he has to fight some knights of the round table. Yep. The yep. <laughs> and they give him a sword. He goes back and kills Atheist. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get the pan out shot where you see very clearly tire tracks on that Calvary oh, Mountain. It's good. Well, I, another thing I love about this, too, is that it's like he's like, ah, finally, I've made it to my destination and I can throw off this backpack. And they're like, no, no, the movie. We're like halfway through. You're still walking on the narrow path. It's the whole the whole thing. From- I know that it seems like after you went through the gate, he very clearly said that the end of your journey would be here and that you just got rid of your sins. So it would seem like this is the end. But no, it is. It actually has quite a bit further to go. And the <laughs> ending is really upsetting and gross. Let me tell you. <laughs> All right. And you still have to rhyme the entire time. Sorry. Not yep. off the hook. Yep. <laughs> Here's your sword. Uh, re- keep that receipt. We got to give it back to Halloween Adventure after the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So we cut back to church cleany guy, wh- whatever. He's cleaning the underside of his blinds now or something. And then we rejoin <laughs> Pilgrim, who's <laughs> he's dodging rocks with his shield and shit, trying to look badass. And they're, they're, they're trying to like the metaphor here is like. Now he's using the shield and the armor of God to protect him against all of the things that he came across in his journey. But like they show him trying to climb rocks with his big fucking shield that's clearly getting in the <laughs> Can't way. Do it. Yeah. It would be so much easier if he didn't have the goddamn shield. And he's dodging the rocks like me playing dodgeball in third grade. It is not an empowering <laughs> image. Cool. Get away. <laughs> no. And also, for the record, I don't think that's how shield handles work. His shield <laughs> has like a purse strap. Yeah. So like he can he can like hold it up and and like hope that it protects yeah, it's, it. It's got that. it it's strangely enough, it's got the kind of hardware you'd need if you were gonna hang it on a fucking hang wall. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's almost wow, that's uncanny. It's exactly right. what it looks like. Yeah. All right, but he gets to the top of a mountain. Oh god. I and then it. he comes across <laughs> The movie's only African American. I was gonna say he comes across the supervillain who is a black person, a black just a single guy. normal, normal black person, just completely just a black guy. That's all it is. Well, they they put him in like lizard makeup or whatever, and it's just like yeah, yeah but like you clearly used the black guy, man. I mean, yeah. I, I was gonna say Noah. I've I've fought these guys in Breath of the Wild. They always have the good shit. Like <laughs> yeah, can, right, right. Yeah, the Lizalfos, the crossbow. Yeah, yeah. the guy. Yeah. Can we just play Breath of the Wild now? Can we? No. Do you want to? Yeah, let's play. I was just picturing what it must have been like when they like announced the casting for this. Right, they're all sitting around just to (laughs) see white faces. He's sitting up towards the front, and they're like, "And finally, for Apollyon, the evil beast." We were thinking, Dave, you could do it, and everyone's just already looking at him. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Y'all, y'all gonna make me play the bird line, aren't you? I'll be your fucking bird line. I hate you guys. So yeah, so he's the king of something or something, and he demands that Pilgrim turn back, and he's like, no, because I'm on Jesus's side. And Apollyon is like, oh, dude, your your god totally got his ass kicked by Romans. And then it's time for the big fight scene. Oh, oh yeah, so it's javelin blocking time. <laughs> oh, dude. So I not, first of all. I would watch this guy block this fucking spear over and over again on repeat for the rest of my life. And secondly, <laughs> he does, right? Like, there's no will. fucking question that this this is his the background on every computer he's ever owned is him blocking this fucking spear with yeah. his shield. Well, the, the, the Lionel or whatever it is in Zelda, it, <laughs> he throws the spear at him, he blocks the spear with the shield, and then the spear explodes after effects explodes (laughs) behind him (laughs) yeah which means and i will pay any amount of money for this footage if you're listening makers of this movie (laughs) please any amount of money there is cut footage somewhere of this guy getting beamed in the fucking chest by this spear and then crying and yelling about how he wasn't ready and I need that footage. I need to, it needs to be my screensaver. Well, if your fucking shield had a real handle, I would have been able to know. It's not my fault. I had to hold it up. It was weird. See, I was giving this guy Lizolfo credit. You went Lionel, man. I, I don't think this guy can take out a Lionel. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> and I love too, because they cut back to the fucking narrator who's like, and they had a great fight scene yeah. that we would love to show you <laughs> it was- if we could pull off that kind of thing, but I think we both know we can't, so... <laughs> Tim did not get hurt during the second take of the javelin. <laughs> um, 
Just uh, trust me when I say it, it's, it was a great fight and nobody used the N-word in a moment of oh, anger and hurt. And we had to cut early for the day. That is not what happened. It was just a kick-ass fight. But, uh, but Dave, if you're watching, we're still really sorry. <laughs> Thank you for signing the release before, yeah, before right. we uh, got the footage. Appreciate that. All right. So Real professional. We cut back to the fight. Well, the, like the post fight, right? Like we've missed the big, yeah. cool fight scene. So now um, Pilgrim is disarmed. Apollyon is about to stab him with his spear, but wouldn't you know it, Jesus literally gives him Jedi powers. Yeah, yep. he does the exact lightsaber call from Empire Strikes Back. Yep. <laughs> to which, by the way, Apollyon, the giant beast, goes, ow, ow. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Now I'm a dead lion lizard. <laughs> we should know using religion magic. <laughs> yeah, he has his spear on his throat, and instead of just being like, oh, I see the sword forcing, using the <laughs> yes. force coming over, I'll just go ahead and finish it right now in the clear five seconds I have before oh, I'm stabbed. Yeah, he right. He just does nothing. Like, <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. That's as close to a high point as this movie is ever going to get. So we're going to pause there, but first let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Would you like this movie on a boat? Would you like this movie with a goat? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the infanticidal conclusion of Pilgrim's Progress. No, pull harder. I'm I'm pulling. Hey guys, what are you doing to Eli's face? Ah, uh, well, look who it is. Look who what is? I guess. Well, see, Eli's a little jealous of you being better looking than him, so we're pulling his teeth out. Ah, everyone loves a guy without teeth. Okay, one, I do not know how those sentences are connected, and two, come on, Eli, you you look eh, fine. No, when we were in California, that waiter comped our dinner and said you had the face of an angel. That was one time. Well, there was also that lady at the winery that kept asking if your eyes could heal her baby. And they did. Her baby wasn't even that sick, Eli. It, look, if you want a straighter smile, why not try Candid? I mean, I I could stop overeating, but honestly, I'm kind of using food to manage my anxiety right now. Not, not, and I not, feel like... No, not that kind of Candid. Clear aligners from Candid, Eli. Oh. Candid's aligners can help straighten your teeth faster than traditional wire braces. Treatment takes just six months on average. So people will stop looking at my wedding pictures and then asking for your number? I was really meaning your mom to do. Right? With Candid, an experienced orthodontist who is licensed in your state creates a custom treatment plan. Then they show you a 3D preview so you can see how your teeth will look after you're done. Plus, Candid ships your aligners directly to you, so there's no hassle of going to an orthodontist's office. And Candid costs 65% less than braces. Get your photo-ready smile by the holidays. Go to CandidCO.com slash awful and use code AWFUL to get $75 off. That's CandidCO.com slash AWFUL. And use the code AWFUL for $75 off? CandidCO.com slash AWFUL, code AWFUL. Candid. Because Noah won't let you put a Wolverine in a bag over Thomas's head. Wait, what? I said we'd talk about it. Well, he's here now. All right, everyone, welcome to the first writer's meeting for Pilgrim's Progress. Yay! <laughs> yes. Very excited. All right. So now we're working with some really wonderful source material here, and I want to do it justice. So before we get started, I'm thinking, what if the whole movie rhymes? The whole movie? The whole thing. All one hour and 40 plus minutes. All one hour and 40 plus minutes. Like like the book. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, boss, you know that people's mm. tastes have changed since the 1600s, right? Oh, come on. Not that much. Where's your sense of adventure? I, I guess. Uh, okay. okay. All right. We can, we can do it. That's the old, that's the spirit. Okay. Uh, let's see. There once was a pilgrim. Uh, pilgrim. All right, guys. Come on. What, mm. what rhymes with pilgrim? Milgram. Like like Scott, mm. like the Milgram Mil experiment. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Pin in that. Mm. Pin in that. Uh, children. Children. I love it. Yeah. Um, I am out of rhymes. Yeah, me too. 
Okay, well, that's all right. That's fine. That's fine. Just one hour and 40 minutes and 55 seconds left to go. All right. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. When we last left our hero, he had murdered the only person of color in this film thus far. <laughs> uh, and we're going to rejoin him staggering away wounded. He's almost dead. But luckily, this is where he meets up with another character. This one's name is faithful and faithful will continue our tradition of having hair divided exactly down the middle like a bedroom in an 80s sitcom <laughs> <laughs> and we also got a quick establishing shot of a bird and i was like no way that fucking bird gave permission to use his footage no <laughs> it's like i don't know don't don't film me don't blur me out when you <laughs> yeah right right at least YouTube. put a black bar over my eyes yeah. <laughs> bird's giving a middle finger in front of its face so it doesn't have to be on tv <laughs> So, yeah, so we meet Faithful, whose hairdo can only be described as ass head. <laughs> Luckily, though, for Pilgrim, he's brought along magic leaves so that they yeah. don't have to keep doing scars. Their makeup guy said, look, one time I'm doing scars, guys. Yeah. We also get an incredibly long shot of Pilgrim gulping down healing water and old Faithful looking rightfully horrified at the extreme close-up of his drinking wet lips. <laughs> also, like, okay, so Faithful's like, here, have a drink of some of my water. And then he drinks all, he pulls the fucking Sam Jackson from the did I break your concentration scene move, right? <laughs> yes. So he drinks all the water out of his, by the way, out of his glass bottle that clearly has a mm -hmm. twist cap. We don't see the twist cap, <laughs> but it's 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 there. And he put some uh, magic leaves on his very serious injuries, <laughs> <laughs> apparently causing him to not be able to walk, which is some red marks on his leg. Oh, my God. My kittens have done worse than that to me. Oh, like, yeah. Since like this currently. Morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, those are poison ivy. And now you're fucked. <laughs> but also, they do, <laughs> they do the magic like, see, and now we're definitely after the fact taking the leaves off. Yeah, exactly. And they take them off. And I'm thinking, oh, couldn't clear up those ingrown hairs, though. Those fucking <laughs> nothing. Couldn't do, nothing fixes those. Also, couldn't find anything besides a croc sandal to wear for this shot. huh? No. Like, complete no. with branding and uh. fucking label. I love to. Okay, so, you know, and so Faithful's like, how did you wind up here? And he's like, well, let me sing you a song about the last oh, 45 God. minutes of this movie. <laughs> and he sings a song, the melody of which is not in any way related to what is happening no! in the music. It's, yeah. they're in a different fucking world for like a minute. <laughs> the, yeah, ah, it drives the, me the nuts. The lyrics as a musician. Have, make no effort to fit into the song or to the rhyme scheme or anything. It's so bizarrely bad. Right, but for those of you who are keeping Inception count, now there is a character <laughs> singing a song about the story that is someone's dream, that is a story that someone's, someone's telling us in a movie yeah. based on a book. <laughs> Which means we're never fucking getting out of here. No. Nope. It's never going to end. Mm -mm. Time we are, is stopped. We are Leonardo DiCaprio's wife. Yep. <laughs> no, she got out. It's, it's, it's him that never got out. And also, by the way, while they're doing this song, there's a moment where, like, they come across a vine that's not even in their way, but Pilgrim pulls his sword out of his sheath and yeah. chops it like he's some kind of badass. Yeah, they put in these ridiculously over-the-top sound effects. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, this little, this, like, leaf that he chops. Did the vine do that? I'm a tree. I just really got chopped. I'm a tree. I just really got chopped. <laughs> Uh, we get a shot of, by the way, somebody's nice 1600s boxer briefs. I noticed yeah, in one of the yes. shots. <laughs> well, those and are they by Lake Tahoe or something? I really want to know where they filmed this. I know that. So I've done some amount of research. The guy's from Oregon. The guy who who wrote it all. Yeah, I was going to say know, Pacific the, Northwest certainly. Is yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it I just, like it. Just, <laughs> yeah, no, it's quite. Lovely. I was just like, oh, I wanted to go <laughs> to take a hike with you guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so as their musical number comes to a close, they see Evangelist again, and at this point, he's clearly just following you, right? Like, they didn't just keep running into Gollum on their way to Mordor. He was fucking following. <laughs> yeah. Right, and I love that they run up to him, and they're like, Evangelist, Evangelist, do you want to hear our song? And he's like, no, absolutely <laughs> not. 
<laughs> Never thought I'd be on the evangelist side, but yeah. And he's like, but the script clearly indicates that you do <laughs> want to hear our song. No. No. Nope. Don't want to hear it. No. Fuck it. I heard that. I heard you guys rehearsing the song. Yeah. <laughs> I know this is take seven. I Same answer. Same answer Still take no. one. Same answer as you. I don't want to hear the song. You can't. There's not a script in the world is going to get me to say that I don't want to hear the song. So you're just going to have to use the shit I am giving you right now. And I love that their names are Christian and faithful. That's a real who's on first situation right there. Yeah. If, if I had the energy, I'd write a whole skit about it. But no, I do it. Right? Yeah. 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 Somebody, Eli. Yeah. So they. he says, no, I don't want to hear your fucking song. I'm just here to warn you. That on the path ahead, you're going to go through a village filled with shiny objects. Try not to get too distracted if there's a squirrel. And there's a point in here in here where he's like, just remember, amusement and entertainment is bad. Yeah, which I, I wrote in my notes. Well, that's obvious from this movie. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The gist of this is. So you need the armor of God in order to make sure you don't have any fun. Yep. Otherwise, you die. <laughs> Don't enjoy amusement. The yes. Christianity. <laughs> Cannot wait to see what temptations lie ahead. Oh, well, good. Good. Because you're not going to have to wait. The very next scene <laughs> is where we're going to meet the clown temptress. I get it. <laughs> I get it. And there's so many tragic things about this actress's performance because oh, she is God. the counterpoint to the drama kid from the beginning of the movie. Right. She is the actress that they know. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. maybe the saddest moment is when she tries to do the like fan floof in front of her face, <laughs> but it's tiny because that was the only one the dollar store had, Candace. <laughs> Work with it. You're supposed to be an actress. So she just like floofs and it's still very clearly just barely covering half her face. <laughs> and I know that that actress probably was like, well, this is temptation, right? Shouldn't I show maybe just a, a hint of cleavage? No, uh, no, absolutely no. No. no cleavage in your temptress costume. It's going to be fucking up to your neck. <laughs> Nothing. She's like, but not even a bit. It's the bad people. You get that it's the bad people. Do you right? want no. interpreter to try to light you on fire again? His muumu <laughs> is filled with <laughs> gasoline and range. And this is the I got to say, if the goal is that she's supposed to be a clown, then first accurate costume of the sh movie. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah. right. The, the best that anybody looks ever like gets. a fucking clown. Yeah. So yeah, so she's gonna sing about all the tempting things in the in the city, and then apparently we're gonna wander through 17th century Bonnaroo while they do that. <laughs> right, anachronistic 17th century Bonnaroo. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say so much less interesting and cool than that. Well, though. yeah, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, all right. So I was pretty distracted because in the background there's a guy swinging poi, but only one of them. <laughs> Sorry, just just like triggering for the juggler. Uh, he's just oh, I know. he's just swinging a single flaming bag <laughs> around. It's not even a fire <laughs> point, dude. It's just he's swinging a bag around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And also, at a certain point, they're 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 uh, they're heavy on jugglers. This uh, temptation yeah. society, whatever they are, this Vanity Fair. That's yeah, what it's called. And they've got a. They've also got a fight going. With a juggler in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like an MMA fight, but like the ref is a juggler or, or there's just a juggler way too close to, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, because of course this is just, you know, very lascivious behavior. There's a guy carrying a, like a little, little basket that says bets. Yes. Yes. So, yes. That's their gambling. If just you would guy. like to bet, you put money in there. In his basket. And yep. then pro step three, profit, I guess. Yeah. Is the, He's later. Doesn't know yeah. what the odds are or what the who you're betting on. It's just bets. Like, I said yes. in my notes for this scene, the fact that Christians think this is what the temptations of the world is are why yeah. state fairs survive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hi, I'd like to buy one cup of alcohol while I place a bet. Huh, I am so, so evil. <laughs> here's how stupidly put together this movie is, right? Like she, uh, The clown lady tempts them, and they're like, no, we don't want to go to your vanity fair. And she's like, well, tough shit, because the next scene takes you right through it. And they're like, that wasn't, wasn't that this scene then? Weren't we yeah. just in it? And they're like, no, we're going to do that, all of that again, sort of. With mm. yeah, and she's singing, and this is a shitty garage band demo from 1993. Oh. I mean, it is just <laughs> pitch perfect. 
and she is just not as good as Hole or whatever the whoever would be back then. Like <laughs> right, she, yeah. she's trying to be, she's not. Yeah. So they get into the actual town, and this is where like everybody's trying to like sell them shit. One yeah. vendor comes up and he says, "Hi, my name is Thief. Would you like to buy some of my stuff?" And it's like, "Don't lead with your name, dude. Don't lead with your name. Come on." <laughs> yeah. Seems to be a liability for your business having that name. <laughs> you probably just don't have it. Yeah, and, and it's unclear to me like what some of the evils of this are because if. For all I know, some of them are just offering goods and services that anybody might need, you know, like, right. Oh, no, you can't buy that basket of strawberries because then you're evil or something. Oh, well, know. yeah, exactly. Like, like, they're, like they walk by a so. tent and there's two ladies sort of waving them in and we're supposed to think that there's a brothel in there or something. But it could be like, well, it could just be that, you know, it's a barber. Right. Like, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. And somebody has a like a plastic loaf of bread. Like, is it a, a I'm sorry, is it a fucking a Christian crime to buy a plastic loaf of bread in this town? Because <laughs> if so, lock me up and throw away the key. <laughs> <laughs> I also want, can we talk about the harlots? Right? So what they did, because they gotta address sex somehow, right? Yeah. They put rouge on two women's cheeks uh. and then had them pointing at a tent. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's the, yeah. Yeah, and also, like, I'm, you know, this seems like a great path. Right, like, <laughs> well, I, I'm with Noah in that. Maybe that's just a makeover. Like they're offering, a, we can, yeah, just the, ooh, yeah. Do you, do you need some cheap makeover? rouge? <laughs> yeah, it's the rouging tent. But they don't want to buy any other stuff from the fair. And then all the people at the fair get mad at them, and they're like, "Hey, you think you're too good for our plastic bread and shit?" Yeah, they stop the entire fucking city. Yep. Because two dweebs won't buy a product. Like, is that really, are we really to believe that this entire commerce works this way? Like one person <laughs> doesn't buy something and they're like, stop fucking everything. We need to talk about this. I'm just browsing. Oh, are you? Hold on a second. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and has there ever been a better allegory for Christian self-centeredness than yes. the idea that they think we create all the temptations of the secular world just for them? Yeah. Yeah. There's right. Nothing, no such thing as like economics or anything. Like it's no. just, no, no. So don't, we don't even make money on this. It's just for you. And I, when they reject, they give this like tearful, like, no, we're not going to the to the clown lady, you know, and they're like, we're not going to throw into temptations. And I'm thinking she's just like, oh, OK, fine. Just uh, there's still some popcorn if you need it. We clearly established that <laughs> That's more plastic bread for the rest of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I mean, fine. All right. You're not into brothels. Just whatever. Fine. Just right, ask cool. them, where are you guys headed to drown in a river? All right. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, no. I'll, okay. Spoiler alert. I'll do my thing. I'll do my thing. Have fun with that. Uh, you don't want to drown on an empty stomach, do you? Come on. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they lock them in the world's most obvious dog cage. Oh my decide. God, yes. It's very clearly a dog kennel. <laughs> yep. It's got newspaper along the bottom. And yep. Shit. And they're going to send them to Doubting Castle. Yeah, okay. So they're like, yeah, we're going to feed them to the giant and throw them in the dungeon. We're going to, no, no. Okay, what we'll do is we'll have the giant <laughs> throw them in the dungeon. You know what? This is getting... Fucking it complicated. Is very unclear what the giant's motives are. And all this. <laughs> I, I have a lot of right. questions. But before that, we I, I never thought I'd say this, but uh, I feel like Beelzebub was overdoing it a little bit. <laughs> oh, God. Get that indication? I love Beelzebub's performance and how uncomfortable it makes everyone in the shot with him. Yes. That. I wanted to, I wasn't even in the room and I wanted to light myself on fire. If it, Imagine if you had to be there to see yes. what was happening. I would die of shame, of secondhand shame. Like, usually it's just metaphorical when we say chewing on the scenery, sir. You're actually, it's... <laughs> oh. And uh, I just realized at this point, my poor wife was asleep on the couch this whole time. And I was just like, I have no idea what fucking circle of hell her dreams must have been at this point. <laughs> She's hearing, she has no idea what this is, and she's hearing just little bits Ooh, of it. Right, we yeah. should invite her on the show to tell us about the dream she had, about the dream <laughs> yeah. that the guy the dreamed movie. that the yeah, guy's finally. story was telling. Because yeah. there weren't enough dreams, so we, need, yeah, we definitely need one more. <laughs> and then we'll make a movie about a song, about a book that we base on <laughs> yeah, that dream. Exactly. <laughs> at the end, we'll wake up inside this movie. Yeah, everybody wins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then by, they're like, oh, the giant's going to come take him to the castle. But then we cut back to the narrator because they can't afford to do a giant. Right. 
uh, uh, the narrator at this point is washing his hands in a tiny bucket. Yep. You're wondering yes. how bad the pantomime has gotten. Clearly washing in his hands after just having taken a giant shit. Yeah. 100%. And he's like, oh, glad you weren't here for that one. Glad we're only coming in now because that, <laughs> that wasn't good. Glad you guys didn't cut back Chipotle, to me during man. the clown was... song because... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh... But uncomfortable for all of us is all I'm saying. <laughs> Let me tell you, there's not a lot of fiber in my medieval diet. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, so they get taken off by the giant. Um, not the giant, by the way, who won't be shown next to any sized thing. You know, no, of so, course. But will be wearing very clearly marked Nike shorts throughout yeah. his performance. <laughs> yeah, he will. <laughs> That's the only. I mean, have you tried to buy clothes for some of a giant? That's it's true. Like, yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Fits. So faithful's being a little whiny bitch in the dungeon. He's just not enjoying himself at all, and he's making it hard for Pilgrim to enjoy it too. And I just want to know, like, either the giant is going to eat you or not. What is the giant's end game here? He seems to be yeah talking to him, but then he's not going to eat it. Like, wouldn't he just fucking eat him or not? T most like oh, to man. kill you in the morning. I have no idea yeah. what's going. And then he's like feeding him fruit, which okay, oh, he's fattening him up, but then. It's starvation rations. It's like, do you, mm -hmm. you're watching your weight? You want to, you're trying to get them down? <laughs> to, okay. And he's going to eat them, by the way, with salad tongs. <laughs> yeah, he has, has a salad tong that he pokes at them with. A salad fork and a salad spoon. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and they were so proud of the, he pokes them with a regular size spoon. And then we see the actors reacting <laughs> to a large spoon. Yeah, clearly it's like a fucking metal rake. Like that's yeah, the, that's exactly. the fork. <laughs> The director might as well have walked out on screen and been like, ah, get it? Giant. Because <laughs> he's a giant. Uh, and by the way, this jail is so bad that it makes whatever song you try to sing off pitch and have no melody. <laughs> it's that bad of a jail. It is. It is. The acoustics are just terrible. He goes, boy, without a miracle, we're fucked. Looks like we're going to need another musical number. <laughs> and during this song, it was bothering me so much that this guy sounded so much like Jeff Buckley. Here's what I did. I Googled him. It's uh, Jeremy Oliveira. And I found his page and I confirmed that he is actually Jeremiah Traeger. It's a, the, the, this look his profile picture. It is Jeremiah Traeger. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, let me scroll down here. Influences. Radiohead. Jeff Buckley. Gorillas. <laughs> yes, you're fucking right. I knew it. <laughs> That's his influences. I fucking knew it, man. All right. Well, there we now we know. <laughs> there we have it. And he's so excited about the first person to visit his webpage. So everybody wins. <laughs> I know. I keep getting messages and shit. Like, hey, do you want to <laughs> buy my music? Yeah, no, actually, no. He's, he's listening to this episode. He's like, I do sound like Jeff Buckley, though. Like, even he heard <laughs> Yeah, he'd he probably be. That like... would be what he would take away from yeah, this. Exactly, thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. They said I sounded like Jeff Buckley. Calls his mom. Some people have been checking out my uh, talent from California, mom, all the way in California where the <laughs> movies are made. <laughs> also, uh, we agreed uh, that you wouldn't come into my room anymore when I wasn't home. Um, we said that at the last family meeting, and then my <laughs> journal was disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> but back in our movie, the giant seems to be walking in a kick drum rhythm, which is weird. Yep, yep. <laughs> it happens. They're doing the kick drum for the giant, but then it's like, boom, ba boom, boom. boom. Yeah, right, like, right. How's he? Yeah, exactly. Is he walking that he's way? Fall, he's doing that thing where you almost fall down the stairs. Yeah. You know, you go down and you, you but do he's like, just ah, doing ah, it ah, over ah. and over again on every step. Yeah. <laughs> but repeatedly and yeah. in rhythm somehow. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Let me know how that works. So, yeah, so they sing their song and, and they've sung themselves back into happiness. And it's just then that Pilgrim remembers that earlier in the movie, he was given a mysterious key. So now that they've been locked in the dungeon for three fucking days, he's like, you know, I should probably try this key I've got. <laughs> right. And to be fair, <laughs> Faithful is like, cool, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to murder you. I don't know. Yeah. It's a good thing Christ forgave all my sins because I'm about to kill you. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's like, well, naturally, I mean, the first thing we would have done is try the key that you have, right? Hmm? Three, th three days. Like, uh, well, I wanted to make sure we had time for all the songs. Before we waited here for three days and sang a <laughs> shitty song, like we would first thing we were done, try the key that you hmm, what? Key? Oh, key, yeah. <laughs> Murder. And uh then we cut to the narrator, by the way, right after that, and uh he is one hundred percent going to fuck his wife while he finishes telling the story. Yes! Like, absolutely. He's like changing into his fuck clones. <laughs> checking Shutting himself outside long in a yeah. mirror, yeah. <laughs> He's like, well, you guys are still here. I'm not done yet. And, uh, 
I told you when we got into this that I don't fucking stop my day for you. So I was pretty sure he was going to fuck us. I mean, this was yeah. second person. <laughs> it actually could have been. Yeah. Yeah. So we go back to our our heroes. And by, OK, so they're they're running from the giant's castle just fast enough that they never have to be in frame with him. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they come across the delectable mountains, which is an apple and four pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> four mini pumpkins. That's the delectable mountains for you. Yeah, I can't eat enough of those mini pumpkins. <laughs> Fucking chow down on those. Ooh. So we get some more mini like pumpkins. walking montage. And I got to say this, like there was a time when they were following a path. At this point, they're just what they've like. It's one of those things where like you haven't seen a fucking blaze in about three and a half. You know, you're not on the trail anymore. And you're just kind of trying to work yourself vaguely right. Yeah. It's one of those. This was things. clearly done in editing. They're like, "Fuck, it's still going." Do we have any roll, B roll of what, what do we have? Just yeah. put it wherever, whatever we had. Nature, we're walking. I yep. don't know. All right. So, but then they finally get to the end of the path where they finally and and we see them like see it like we're you know we're watching their faces as they see the end of their journey for so long. And I'm like, "All right, this is where all the money went. What did they? What did they come up with for the end of the path?" <laughs> And then we did turn to where we can see what they're looking at. And it's just a fucking pond. But <laughs> but behind the mesa that they're looking at, you can see golden lights and shit. Trust us, there's a big city or something. We pinky swear that just behind the mountain. <laughs> it's the South Park scene, right? The Oh, if you could see this great battle that's going. <laughs> this yep. city is so majestic. I know we've spent the whole movie talking about this city and shitting on literally everything in the world that exists. But uh, yeah, this city. <laughs> yes, in comparison. City has convinced me. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> but yeah, so they see the pinky swear over the horizon. And just then a couple of the, the angels show up and say, well, you've made it to the end of the path. Now get in the river and drown yourself to death. We're the yeah. good guys. Yeah, this was just an elaborate jigsaw type yes. torture process. <laughs> and now they die. And then the, the angels must be like, dude, can you believe we convinced those two of these to drown themselves? <laughs> Holy shit. I never thought. Wow. God comes down. He's like, hey, what are you guys doing? Nothing. We were uh, saving these guys. They were trying to yeah. drown themselves. Crazy. <laughs> Couldn't stop them. We tried really hard. Couldn't stop. You always prime directive, man. Couldn't <laughs> prevent them from doing that. Right. And the two actors here, Faithful and Pilgrim, are tasked with the joyfully drown yourself <laughs> yes. acting challenge. Yes. Let's hold Yay. our hands and kill ourselves to this music. <laughs> <laughs> I also love this line, too. Pilgrim goes, you know, if I was all alone, this would be scary. But God's with me. And Faithful's like, I'm also with you, dude. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you too. You also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, then this is where here where I realized, oh, fuck. Jeff Buckley drowned in goddamn river, too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and yet, fucking this guy didn't take that inspiration from him. And somehow we get a quick shot of that before he drowned himself in this place that was, you know, 5,000 miles away from where he started. He leaves his Bible for his wife right next to her. Wait, did I? Well, he asks the angel to drop it off. Apparently the oh, angels have okay. a stamps.com kind of thing. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. I missed that. Sorry. Which means that we then get a montage of his family <laughs> drowning themselves, <laughs> including the children. It's yes. literally honey. I drowned the kids. <laughs> yes, Jesus Christ. My notes here are just like, oh, my God, they're going. This is fucking Jonestown. What is yep. this is dark. The children, the, the the wife, who, by the way, they're, they're still probably roasting him while he was gone the whole time. They yeah. didn't realize he left. The wife and kids are still just fucking zinging him. <laughs> and then they get the book and they're like, oh, hey, children, want to go die? Yes, we do, Mom. And they go fucking drown themselves to death. <laughs> Give me one way. This is Jonestown. Please tell me one way in which this is not Jonestown. Yeah, again, this works fine if you're not looking at it, right? If you're like, oh, the narrow path is your entire life. And of course that ends with it. But that's not, we're, we're looking at it. This is just a mother taking her children off to drown them so they can get to heaven. The message is very clearly kill yourself and go to heaven. Is it not? Yep. I th That's yes. certainly the analogy. Yes. I have a question at the end of my notes about that. That uh, I was hoping you guys had a different answer, but yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's it. But don't worry. 
it's a happy infanticidal ending because now they they all meet up in heaven like the heaven's gate cult with a a, a happy twist. Yep. Yeah, see you on the other side of this asteroid, everybody. Yeah, right, <laughs> fucking right. poison ourselves. <laughs> all right, and then okay, and as weird as this fucking shit is. Then the guy that was dreaming, not the narrator, not the guy cleaning the church, <laughs> the guy who was dreaming about Pilgrim wakes up and then he has a big come to Jesus moment. <laughs> he goes to the church of the narrator. Yeah, but he no, but he is the narrator. No, he is the narrator. No, this is the yeah. guy. No. That the, the, the narrator is telling us about this guy falling asleep and dreaming about Pilgrim because he had a dream about this guy. Wait, no, he had a dream. Okay, here's how I thought took it. And okay. where you can all try to we all compare the top the spinning top wiggled a little <laughs> bit. No, they, they uh we can all compare our fan theories. But no, I'm pretty sure he's telling us that when he was younger, he had this dream about Pilgrim, and now he's an old guy who fucks his wife while people with cameras watch. Oh, okay, okay. So he was dreaming about at the beginning of the movie, though, because he, he's having this dream before he wakes up. Yes. Right. And so he was dreaming about himself being younger and dreaming about that. No, yeah. no. At the beginning of the, the movie, he's dreaming about Pilgrim drowning. So he's right. having like the same dream that he had oh, when he was okay. younger. All right. So the part where he's younger is truly pointless. Like you should have just told us the story then. Right. I mean, like, yeah. why you wait to your old fucking man then? Yeah, right, us. right. Isn't yeah, why urgent? bother telling us that you also had that dream once before? Yeah, like too. we could have drowned ourselves 30 years ago if you told us. <laughs> so he he falls to his knees having found Jesus based on a dream, and then he's like, in 30 years, I'm going to tell some random <laughs> yeah, exactly. <this> story. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And then I wrote down, like, is there going to be an even older narrator who tells us he was dreaming, like, that he had was a younger narrator? <laughs> <laughs> the older narrator is Muslim. Okay, I got some corrections to make for you guys. <laughs> Hear me out. All right. I've learned some things since then. I understand, so I'm catching you up. Yeah. But then we beg, we come back to old narrator here who closes the final parenthesis, I guess. <laughs> Allegedly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the lesson, by the way, he takes away from all of this is that you know, things that don't exist are far more important than things that do. That's the yep. moral, right? I mean, that, that is drown your wife and children to get them to heaven, right? Yeah, that and the best thing you can do is die. Yep. Damn, because I had this whole question at the end where I was going to ask if anyone had a less depressing ethical takeaway, but it sounds like... Uh, ooh, ooh, I have one. Okay. Clowns are hot. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There is no sexual temptation greater than a clown. <laughs> yeah, the only other one I can think of is like black people are the villain. No, that's not better. That's no, not any better. no, yeah, no. exactly. No, there are I two messages: <laughs> black people are villains and kill yourself. That's all I got from this. Yeah, that's all I got. okay. All right. Well, Thomas, I can't thank you enough for suffering alongside us through this one. So I'm not even going to bother to try. But if people want to hear more from you, where should they go to find you? Hey, check out Serious Inquiries Only. I've been, uh, I took on a, a co-host, Jamie Lombardi. She's a philosopher. She is brilliant and we've been having a lot of fun over there. So if you've ever checked out that show, you know, you've given it a break or anything, go check it out now. It's kind of rebooted. It's a lot of fun. And of course, opening arguments and my other shows, Philosophers in Space is also a lot of fun, but, uh, yeah, SIO, Serious Inquiries Only. Yeah. Sorry. I couldn't work Philosophers in Space into the rhyme. I, I only had <laughs> so many yeah. lines to work with. So. All right. Awesome. Well, that's going to do it for our review of Pilgrim's Progress, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to assure the audience that we haven't thought better of this yet. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? Can I get a witness? Protection. Oh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> Enjoy I that one. I really don't need to know anything about else about it. So, yeah. All you right. sure don't. You got it all. You got that whole movie. You're ready. All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 214 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Thomas Smith and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Gay, The Citation Needed, and The Skeptic Crowd, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres, Tim Robertson, 
takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slack, Nick Vivo, Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Neil Bosnick, and Thomas Smith, who, by the way, you can check the show notes. You'll find his show. I meant to mention earlier that his shows will be linked on the show notes. They are. Anyway, for him and Eli and Heath, I'm Noah, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. The giant starved to death like an idiot because he didn't just eat the people on day one of having them in his little dog kennel. Fucking idiot giants always do it. John Bunyan didn't rap back. Your move, motherfucker. The interpreter's wife's bridge club took up the whole goddamn living room all afternoon, Karen, damn it. And Heath still didn't call me back or come to the recordings <laughs> when I'm on his show. That every time I come on here, it's not You're here. Right. Where's he? You Where's beat him he? once in Trivial Pursuit. He'll never forgive you. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.